Welcome to the Tabletop Simulator tutorial series. I'm Kimiko with Berserk Games, and this tutorial series will go over all the different tools, custom content, and the various things you can do in Tabletop Simulator. This third episode in the series will go over how to create a custom game from start to finish. If you missed the previous videos, they will be linked in the description below. If you need assistance with the hotkeys, press the question mark key on your keyboard or the button next to the enter key if you are not using a US keyboard to bring up the help menu. You can also find more in-depth info in our knowledge base on our website, which will also be posted in the description below. Now before we begin, it's going to be assumed you already have your ideas in place and know what you're going to be making. I'm going to be making a fictional game that I just made up on the fly, but you obviously will already have your games in place. This is just to show you how to take what you have down on paper and bring it into Tabletop Simulator. So let's get started. Get all your assets in place, and now we're going to begin importing them into Tabletop Simulator. To import a deck of cards, you'll need to either use a deck template, the deck builder, or create your own template to have it ready to import. In this case, I'm going to use the deck builder, which can be found in the modding folder of Tabletop Simulator. The deck editor is super easy to use and makes creating your decks a breeze. Once you open it up, click on New Deck and choose the size of your deck. By default, the size is 10 by 7, which is the max amount you can have at one time, which offers you 69 cards plus the hidden back card in the 70th slot. I am going to be changing the template to 4x3, which will yield me 11 cards plus the hidden back card in the 12th slot. You want to make sure that every card in your template is unique, as in no duplicates, because that will eat unnecessary resources. Once the deck is imported, you can just copy and paste any extra cards you need. Keep in mind, if you need to create a deck that has more than our maximum, just import multiple decks and combine them together in game. It is recommended you fill up each template completely before importing as you will use up the same amount of resources regardless of how many cards you have on the sheet. So the less sheets you upload, the better. I have created my cards already and I'm going to just drag and drop them into the slots. The 12th slot is the hidden card in your hand, so you want to make sure you put that there. Once you've got your deck sorted how you want, you want to save your TSDB file so that you can refer back to it later if you need to make any changes. And now you can export your files. Click on File and then Export. You will see the current size of your template. You want to check the max deck size box and make sure it is set to 4096 or less. The recommended size is 4K for optimal quality. Now that we have our deck created, we can bring it into Tabletop Simulator. Click on Objects, Components, and then Custom. Then click on Deck. Click on the folder icon to bring up the file browser to import your images. If you plan on having different backs for each of your cards, then you would follow the same steps as above for creating your deck and then save that separately. Then when you bring it into the game, you input that URL for the back and check the Unique Backs box. Choose the width and the height of your template. The default is 10 by 7, but we changed ours in the deck editor, so you change these sliders to match the ones you created. Then choose the number of cards you have in your deck. Click Import, and now we have our deck. You can also search the deck so you can see the cards in all their glory. This is also the time where you can flesh out your deck by copying and pasting the extra cards that are needed to fill out your deck. Now that we have the cards done, we can move on to the rest of the game. I have a mat that I want to use as the base. You can do a couple things here. First is to go to Objects, Components, Custom, and then choose Board. Input the URL or import the image with the file browser. Your mat is now mounted onto a board with a wooden border. Boards cannot be alt zoom, so you'll have to use the M key to zoom in on areas. Another option you can do if you don't want the wooden border is to use the Tile option. You can choose different shapes for your mat. In this case, I'm going to use the rounded option so my edges aren't straight. Tiles can also have different images for the front and back, so this is a great option if your mat is double-sided. You can then choose how thick you want your mat to be, and then you can choose if you want it to be stackable or not. This isn't necessary for mats, but great for small tiles. When you click Import, you will see your mat is there, but super tiny. This is the default size as they are normally used for generic tiles, but all you need to do is hover over it and press the plus key to enlarge it to whatever size you desire. 
You can also use the gizmo tool on the left to adjust more precisely. And there we have it, our lovely mat with rounded corners. And don't forget to lock down your mat before placing objects on it, or you might accidentally pick it up. Let's say I wanted to make tokens to use as pieces instead of the generic pawns. Tokens are a great option for transparent objects. Import your image and make sure it's a PNG file. If you don't need to worry about transparency, then you can just use the tiles in this case. Choose how thick you want it and the merge distance, which affects how accurate your image will be traced, and if you want it to be stackable or not. Now I have two cat tokens I can use for my game. You can see how the whiskers on the gray cat got traced, so it works really well. I created a second one so you can compare between the two. They are very similar, but the one on the right, I chose the less accurate option, so you can see the edges are not as smooth. Another option you can use in place of pawns or tokens are figurines. We have a simple option if you want a standing character. Just choose the front and back images, if you want it to be different, and import. You get a nice silver base and your images now look like paper figurines. Very simple and effective. Those are your three different options that you can use in place of pawns tiles, tokens, and figurines. Now we'll need some dice. If you need something a bit different than the regular built-in dice, you can create your own using our template, which can be found in your modding folder, where you found the deck templates and deck builder. Once you have your template set up how you'd like, it's time to import it. Click on dice and choose the type and then import your image like we've done previously. And there you have it a simple way to create a custom dice without having to know how to model. Asset bundles are a great way to enhance your projects by giving you the options for animations, particle effects, sounds, and much more. While I'm not going to go through the process of how to create an asset bundle, you can go through the steps in our knowledge base. There will be a direct link to the page in the description below. Once you have all your files in order, then you can begin importing your asset bundle. Just find your asset bundle and put it in the first box. Secondary asset bundles are an additional asset bundle which are great for shared effects like sound or particle effects that you want to use on multiple objects without duplicating them in each individual asset bundle. This is great for reducing memory and bandwidth usage. Choose what type your asset bundle should be. In this case, I'm choosing a figurine. And then choose the material and import it. Now you should see your complete asset bundle, which will have a purple icon when you hover over it if you set up a trigger or looping effect like I have. Custom models are another advanced feature I will not be going over as that will depend on if you know how to model or not. There are plenty of tutorials on the web that you can find to help you get started. To import your custom models, click on model and as you can see, you have a lot more options you can mess around with in two separate tabs. In the model tab, you first want to import your model or mesh file in OBJ format. Then import a PNG or JPEG file for the image. If a normal is needed, then you'd add that to the next spot. By default, there will be a custom collider added to your object. If you created a collider that goes with your model, then you'd add that here. Check the non-convex box only if you also supplied a mesh collider. Then choose the type your object is. In this case, I'm choosing a coin. Switch to the Material tab and choose the material your object will have. You can also adjust the specular intensity, color, and sharpness, as well as the Fresnel strength, and if you want your model to cast shadows or not. Hover over each option to read the tooltip for full details or read about it in our knowledge base. So now we have almost everything we need for our game. The last thing we need are the rules. I'm going to add a link to the tablet so people can easily read through the rules. I'm also going to put a link to the rules in the notebook so that everyone can read and download the rules for future use. Once we have our game complete, then we have to make sure we save it. In the Save and Load menu, click on the Create button to make a save file. And now we can upload our final game up onto the workshop. It's very simple to do once you have everything laid out exactly as you want. At the top, click on Upload and then Workshop Upload and fill in all the details for your project. Click Upload and you'll get a notification that it is uploading. After a few seconds, you'll get a pop-up with your workshop ID. You can now go to your workshop page and find your new mod. By default, it will show up as hidden, which will give you time to make any changes needed before you release it to the public. 
You want to make sure to add as much info as possible for the description of the game, with links to the rules or anything else you find necessary. You also want to provide screenshots of the game so people get an idea of what it looks like. The more detailed info and images you provide, the better chances you have at someone checking your game out. Once you have everything exactly how you want it, you can now change the visibility to either be friends only or public. For now, I will be keeping it hidden, but as you guys are watching this, it will already be live, so you can check it out for yourself. One other thing we want to go over is if you need to make any changes to your game. So let's say I want to change what I'm adding to the game, move some pieces around, etc. Once I have the new layout how I want, you go to Upload, Workshop Upload, and then Update Workshop. Click on the Workshop icon next to the Input field to get your Workshop ID and make any changes necessary that you need to do. You don't need to re-import the thumbnail unless you plan on changing it. Click Update and you will get confirmation once it's done. Now if you go to your Workshop page, you will see the version you just updated. So anytime you want to make a change, you just do it this way. And that's all there is to it! I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and it helps you in creating your own custom games. If you have any questions, just post them in the comments below. And don't forget to check out the knowledge base for a lot more info on what you can do in Tabletop Simulator. Thanks for watching and see you next time!